Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's match review of Chelsea's 4-3 win over Reading in pre-season. Yes, indeed, quite the pre-season ding-dong. Loads of goals, quite a lot of mistakes, but a lot of promising things that happened as well. 22 different players used for Chelsea, two different formations, loads of talking points as well. But before we get into today's match review, I'd like to request that you do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notifications icon because I upload videos every single day and you do not want to miss out on the content. All right, there's a lot to talk about in today's video, so without further ado, let's get into the analysis and formation. The first half saw Chelsea and Frank Lampard set up a 4-2-3-1 formation with the personnel looking like this. Willy Caballero was in goal with Marcus Alonso in the left back position, Davide Zappacosta in the right back position, and the centre back pairing was between Tomori and Christensen. Then there was a rather uninspiring double pivot which was shared between Bakayoko and Drinkwater. Exciting, right? Christian Pulisic started on the left wing, Kennedy was on the right wing, Ross Barkley played in the hole as a number 10, and Giroud led the line by himself. Chelsea started the game very comfortable on the ball in terms of playing out of their own defensive third, playing out from the back, but this is to be expected from this current Chelsea crop of players and how Chelsea have been playing this preseason. Chelsea were very good pressing from the front in this first half, that mainly came from Christian Pulisic and Ross Barkley, rattled Reading a little bit, you can tell they're not really used to playing out from the back and when they could they'd get the ball in the air. And speaking of getting the ball in the air, this is what Reading were good at, it's important I say this early, they were incredibly good at putting crosses in, delivering set pieces which I guess we'll talk about a bit more in this review. They grew into the game in terms of keeping the ball on the deck but that was their go-to to sort of play out of Chelsea's press. But as this first half got underway and a few more minutes got into the game, it was sort of obvious how this Chelsea 11 in this formation, perhaps these players haven't played too much together, they were lacking a sort of team synergy and certainly a lot of chemistry between the 11 and there was a lot of mistakes made in and out of possession further up the pitch, certainly in midfield. Within the first 10 minutes, Alonso rather surprisingly had a couple of good defensive actions, well maybe not so surprisingly because I said this last game when he did a couple of good defensive actions, I thought you know what, Alonso might be on the right path to you know becoming a better defender but no a couple of minutes later he concedes a free kick in a very dangerous position reading demonstrate how good they are at set pieces after taking this free kick delivering a ball in that is only inches away from being properly converted for a goal but it only takes three minutes later for reading to take the league in the 13th minute it was a goal by barrett and to be fair although it came off a bit of a lucky ricochet it was a lovely finish to send it over caballero to be honest this goal came about from the engine room the midfield being weak the back four was left a bit stranded, but because that space was vacated by mainly Bakayoko, who let the team down here, it offered the Reading forwards to basically function and create an offensive passage of play. Very frustrating from a Chelsea perspective though. Chelsea respond immediately with some pressure going up the other end of the pitch. Christian Pulisic and Barkley combine very well, they get the ball out to Marcus Alonso who puts in an excellent cross that basically needed anyone to tap it in to draw level, but no one does. At this point of the game, the Reading fans were having a lovely time and they were chanting, can we play you every week? Very amusing. Bakayoko frustrates once again and gets on the end of a cutback but only seeing the ball go into like row Z or something. Maybe his positional play got a little bit better throughout this half but he had so many frustrating elements of his play which included you know sending the ball into row Z or loads of missed place passes as well as occupying the wrong space at the wrong time, just generally being bad. But come off the 22nd minute and Chelsea equalise via a Ross Barkley free kick. And what a free kick it was from Barkley, probably approximately 20 yards out, but it was directly looking at the goal centrally, which makes it very difficult for the person who's taking the free kick but he hits it well and he curls it into the top left side netting, which is almost impossible for a goalkeeper to save. So an excellent goal from Ross Barkley, who's been enjoying an amazing preseason. I've got to give some props to Alonso. He does very well in the 35th minute to win a free kick. The set piece is delivered in and Oli G is at the back post to meet it with his head. You'd absolutely put your house on Giroud converting this. 
but he doesn't. He sends it wide of the post, and it's a rare miss for Giroud in that circumstance. 40th minute comes, and Barkley does a wonderful piece of play in the 18-yard box. He dummies it, does a disguised pass, and passes back to a running drink water who meets the ball and does an excellent Bakayoko impression and puts it in Rosez. But then come of the 42nd minute and Kennedy, who had been having quite a good game at this point, scores a long range goal, maybe 30 yards out. I mean, maybe the keeper could have done a little bit better, but he hits it incredibly well and ultimately it's a good goal. So the end of the first half, 2-1 Chelsea. Let's run through the players and talk about how they performed. Caballero did pretty good. He's a smart goalkeeper. We know he's got enough quality. He made a couple of good saves, nothing to Hollywood, but his distribution was good and a very sensible goalkeeping performance. Both centre-backs were okay, but often, this, like I said, the chemistry between them wasn't great. Tomori was very good physically in terms of dominating the opposition and winning free kicks, but maybe his positional play wasn't too great. And I guess in terms of all-round centre-back play, Christensen was probably the better out of the two in this half, but neither of them shines dramatically. Bakayoko, worst player on the pitch for me, really uninspiring on the ball, occupied the wrong space, loads of missed place passes, poor defensively, poor offensively, sadly. Danny Drinkwater, fortunately he had Bakayoko playing next to him to make him look better, but still not great. He had some good moments in possession, he sort of held onto the ball well, got rid of it okay, but still rather uninspiring, and to be honest, I, I really see him struggling getting anywhere near the first team for important games next season. Christian Pulisic, very impressive in terms of application and energy, runs up and down the flank very well, good in possession, good at dribbling, good at cutbacks. When he gets a better chemistry with his players or a better relationship, you can see him bagging a few assists and he did good pressing, good pressure. Nothing really paid dividends in the end, but in terms of his application, very good performance. Kennedy, for me, getting better and better throughout pre-season. Obviously, he scored the good long-range goal, but he also probably could have had two in this half. He's one of those players that will make mistakes in the game, but his head's not been dropping, which is good, and he's been growing throughout his minutes on the pitch. So pretty darn good performance from Kennedy. Olivier Giroud, bit disappointing for me, bit of a passenger. Usually he gets that one chance where he should have buried that header at the back post. He didn't have the kind of players that like to play one twos with him, so a bit of a passenger. Maybe this game didn't suit him. Ross Barkley, now easily player of the half for me. Magnificent performance. Uh, not only was it the great free kick, he was dropping deep all the time, making himself available for the ball and for passes and dictating play. He made long diagonal passes, he made short passes, he was doing dummies, disguised passes. Star of the show, absolutely, and having an immensely good preseason. And it's, you're starting to think he needs to start in Frank Lampard's team no matter what formation he plays, which is kind of nice to see. All right, let's get into the second half now. Frank Lampard made 10 changes, all the outfield players. He eventually brought coming on for Caballeros and then that was it for changes. So I'm gonna say with the formation next to me, it's a whole new 11. He gave everyone 45 minutes, essentially. And the formation changed, and Frank went back to his midfield diamond to see how that would fare against this Reading side. So let's say coming was in goal, and then the back four consisted of Azpilicueta at right back, uh, Emerson down at left back, and the centre back pairing was between Louise and Kurzuma. Okay, so the midfield diamond consisted of Jorginho sitting at the base of the diamond. Kovacic played on the right of the diamond, Mason Mount played on the left, and rather interestingly, Pedro came on and played at the tip of the diamond. And this change of personnel and formation saw the return of strike partnership Michi Batshuayi and Tammy Abraham. So let's get into how this half went. The opening stages of this half was played at an incredibly fast pace with a lot of mistakes being made from both sides. Reading put on some early pressure on Chelsea and in the 49th minute they force a good save and win themselves a corner. Reading convert from said corner in the 50th minute. It was a good delivery and this is more testament to how that's the strength in their game reading set pieces keeping the ball in the air crosses etc but it was poor defending from Chelsea and even worse non-existent marking at the back post sadly starting to look much like the first half in terms of how this half started with a lacking of team synergy chemistry whatever the, the partnerships weren't there just yet in the 53rd minute Louise finds Pedro with an excellent long ball superb long passing but Pedro can't quite get it under a spell to take off a shot, 
but some great work from both of them. And then a minute later, Luis does another great bit of skill. He takes the ball down with his weaker left foot, spins and hits the crossbar. Great touch, great shot with his weaker foot, but cannot convert. Right, in the 57th minute, Mason Mount gets a goal. Tammy gets the ball, crosses it in, maybe looking for Michy Batshuayi. There's a bit of a sort of confusion moment in the box, but Mason Mount runs on the end of it and scores a lovely goal. Even though it's close to the keeper, I think it hits it with a lot of sting at pace and it goes through the goalkeeper's hands. Come of the 59th minute and Reading goalkeeper Walker is probably a bit rattled still from his uh, conceding that goal from Mount because he uh, kicks out a really poor pass. Um, Mishy just basically pounces on it and passes it into Mason Mount who scores another immediately. Two goals in 15 minutes for Mason Mount. Love that. So by this point in the second half, Chelsea's quality is shining at this period. The 11 obviously out now are better quality with the majority of them than the previous 11 and they're starting to demonstrate that a bit more. 61st minute, David Luiz gets on the end of a corner, probably should score and doesn't which is frustrating but the opportunity was there to score yet another goal. As we get into the final 30 minutes, Chelsea's passing does look very, very good at times, but concentration often drops and Reading do get chances to go up the pitch. But when Chelsea's concentration levels were high, superb, high quality passing, good interplay, looked very good. 71st minute, Baldock scores a goal for Reading. Yeah, this game's getting pretty mental now. A beautifully weighted pass that he runs through Chelsea's back line and scores. To be honest, Poor defending from Chelsea and it's just showing now that Chelsea aren't only vulnerable from having the ball in the air and set pieces, they should really be concentrating more and not letting that runner get beyond the back line. 76th minute, Tammy Abraham hits an acrobatic kick, uh, she nearly scores a dozen. So for the final 15 minutes of this game, it's just Chelsea piling on the pressure to Reading. Good passes, Kovacic is doing quite well. He popped off a couple of shots actually, both are deflected, winning his team corners. Chelsea can't score one more and ultimately the game ends, Chelsea 4, Reading 3. So how did the players perform in the second half? Coming and goal did decent enough, but not a good enough sample size for me to really judge him. But I know he's a good young keeper, so we'll just pass on through. Emerson was decent on the flank, getting up and down well like we're used to seeing him do, but nothing too exciting, good at sort of take-ons, but in terms of his positive pre-season that he's been having, didn't do anything particularly exciting to shine. Kurt Zuma was a bit worrying at the beginning of this half, he sort of made some mistakes, he overplayed some balls and played the wrong passes or misplaced passes because he was overplaying, but he grew into the match defensively and then showed his strength and skill. David Luiz probably the better out of the two centre backs purely because he was defensively okay but we know David Luiz likes to get involved with the outfield play a lot more and he did that today great passes went upfield a lot maybe should have scored so out of the two probably the better centre back due to all round play. As Blaquerta now he impressed me today because I've had concerns about him playing in the right back position I think he's a very good defender but he doesn't get up and down a lot maybe he can't these days don't say he's really old but maybe that's never been his game but you know what he was smart he's been getting forward when he needs to and he's been making himself available when appropriate so that's good right he's put in some good crosses he's been there when he needed to be there and he wasn't just bombing up and down for the sake of it which he can't do even if he wanted to so better from Aspilicueta. Jorginho had a good enough game, demonstrated some good passes, probably not his best game, but not that he did anything particularly wrong. But recently, at the end of last season and this preseason, he's been running things a little bit more and bossing matches. Probably didn't do that too much today, but a very serviceable performance. Kovacic, very silky on the ball, very silky in possession, and did some nice skills playing out of pressure and playing out of the press. Again, something that only really he can do in this Chelsea side at the moment or to that level that he does. I'm a big fan of Kovacic. I do worry for him in this starting 11 coming in this season, but a good performance today. Um, two shots on goal, both deflected. Positive. Mason Mount, probably my player of the half, not just because he had his two goals. He's very good at pressing, energetic, um, moving into the right space, attacking the right space, linking up well. Not necessarily his best match so far, even though he got the two goals, but very, very impressive and He's going to be giving Frank Lampard a headache. Pedro, interesting at the tip of the diamond. Um, to, well, to be honest, there was Frank Lampard's 4-4-2 uh, diamond actually offers a lot of license for the midfield diamond to rotate. Maybe not so much Jorginho, but the front three of the diamond do move around a lot. So Pedro did roam. 
Um, didn't do anything too exciting. Got on the end of a couple of long balls from Louise. Um, we know he's pretty decent with his combinational play. Didn't score. Maybe could have played a little bit better, but... He's a known quantity, Pedro. Played good enough. Right, I want to talk about Tammy and Mishy's partnership. Now, neither of them scored. Um, obviously, Mishy got an assist. Um, for me, it's really impressive to see how they've developed their strike partnership. I reckon Frank Lampard has got in their ear and told them to be less selfish because they were from the off here they were looking for each other a lot lot more and that's what you want to see from two strikers in a partnership which was positive again very different skill sets the ball was passed up to Mishy to uh, hold on to the ball he had some very good touches in this game and his hold up play was better and Tammy was the one to attack the space or run in behind so they both got different attributes they work well together and it's nice to see them develop the partnership and it could work next season this season. Alright, that's enough of the formation players and analysis. An exciting game to watch for the neutral, but a lot of worrying elements for Chelsea in terms of defending and set-piece defending especially. Um, I think Chelsea will be good this season in midfield, they've got options, they can find the right players and the quality is there. So there's a lot of positives to take away so far from pre-season and that's good to hear. Frank basically and quite bluntly needs to just drop drink water and back Yoko and I think ultimately when you get rid of um, players like that and start working with the players you know you can work with, different formations and different relationships and partnerships will get better. Frank's two biggest headaches for me though is centre-back partnership, who is he going to choose? Because he has a, a good four high quality centre-back so he needs to find out what has got the best synergy and what works best. It does look like Louise will be first choice but it's finding who's going to work with him. And another big big problem or good problem to have is the Barkley Mason Mount situation. Both of them have been excellent in pre-season and if Frank's going to go for the 4-2-3-1 generally this season there's only room for one number 10 in that formation and it's going to be either Mason Mount or Ross Barkley and probably at the moment Ross Barkley is edging it due to his all-round play, dropping incredibly deep, playing long diagonals, playing short passes, goals, assists, hold-up play. He's just doing it all at the moment, Barkley. Incredibly impressive. So guys, what do you think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on the players, the formations, pre-season in general, my channel. Give me your thoughts. Are you enjoying my content? Just get down there and get commenting. Obviously, I'd like to request that you like the video. If you've enjoyed the video, please do that. Uh, of course, subscribe if you are new. And a small plug for my patreon channel you can play one dollar a month and i basically at the moment i'm doing q and a's for my patrons where you guys ask me questions and i answer them directly to you uh, addressing you and answering your questions and i'll probably do like two a month so that's 50 dollar cents um a month per question if you do too anyway check out my patreon the link is in the description that's it guys thank you so much for tuning in to football therapy with me and i hope you've enjoyed this match review enjoy the football and i'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't I